but we can't let that stop us from diving into this wonderful field of opportunity, and it certainly won't stop me. So that brings me to my topic today. How many of you have heard of the women, Susan Wojcicki, Marissa Meyer, or Sheryl Sandberg? Good, then you'll want to pay attention to my talk. My dad has worked for Microsoft since before I was born. Due to this, we've always been a very technologically aware and advanced family. I grew up surrounded by technology and with the ingrained belief that the use of tech would make an improvement on my life. Whenever my dad received a new piece of tech from Microsoft, he'd say it was a gift from Uncle Bill, which is our household nickname for Bill Gates. We often talked candidly about technology and the ways it has and can change the world. I hadn't become truly grateful for my upbringing until recently. When I was little, I mostly just complained to my friends that my dad wouldn't let me have an iPhone because that would be contributing to the competitor. But I see now that it is my family's involvement with technology that has first generated my interest in it and is propelling me now to pursue a career in information technology. Looking back, I wonder if I would choose the same path had my dad had a different profession. I never would have had the same exposure to technology or heard all the stories about how technology was creating driverless vehicles or how it could create prosthetics in exact fit to the human body with only a 3D printer. So I don't think I would have the same amount of interest in the field as I do now. And while I'm excited to begin my studies at college and dive deeper into the world of technology, to give my part in making the world a better, safer, and more efficient place with technology, I'm not particularly thrilled to join a field and it's not working. So also always be prepared in your career. <laughs> to give my part in making the world a better and safer, more efficient place with technology. Oh, there it goes. I'm not particularly thrilled to join a field where only 25% of all positions are held by women and only 11% of all executive positions are women. There are some upsides to this. I'm practically guaranteed a job, but that's not only because I am a minority in the field, but because the technology sector is only going to grow further. And that is why it is so important that we generate girls interest in not only technology, but STEM in general. STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and math. So that the, and at a young age, so that they take these jobs when they are older and lessen the gender gap in the field that continues to increase. Therefore, we have to make STEM a feminist thing. And by that, I mean introducing girls to coding and technology as early as elementary school, giving them a representation of women in the tech field, having leadership positions and doing great things, as well as the extent of all the potential that can be accomplished in the field. And not that it is the most important thing, but it is also worth mentioning how much money not only women, but anyone thinking of studying technology has the potential to make. The average starting salary for computer science and information technology degrees are $58,400 and $48,900. And this would also increase with years of experience to $100,000 and $81,700. For the most part, computer science and information technology are considered economically safe degrees that will pay back the amount spent on a college degree. And especially since women are underrepresented in this field, companies are more likely to look favorably upon women graduates, which is something I believe we need to make clear to women when we are advertising the field of technology. Um. Earlier this month, I met with a woman who works in the administrative department at Michigan State University. She has been, she has been a woman in a male-dominated field for her entire life from when she started as a disc jockey to game design to IT and even now in academia. She finds herself to be a minority among her fellow administrators and other staff. Talking to her about her career made me so excited for my future and for all that I want to accomplish in my life. One thing she said that stuck with me the most was that throughout her entire career, the best ideas and solutions had come from diversity. With diversity, she felt more comfortable and better solutions were created, whether they were technical or not. And that is why it is so important that we encourage women to become part of not only the technology field, but STEM overall, so that they join these male-dominated fields and help create better solutions to make our world the amazing place that we dream it to be. Of course, there's nothing wrong with women who are exposed to technology and simply choose a different career path. That's the beauty of feminism, empowering women to choose what they want to do. The concern is, however, that the portrayal of STEM isn't the same across boys and girls, and that girls aren't receiving their fair share of exposure to the technology fields as boys are. 
And while it's crucial to talk about men like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Mark Zuckerberg, men who have changed the world with technology for the better for men and women alike, it's also imperative to pay attention to women who hold leadership positions in the technology field, such as Sheryl Sandberg, CEO of Facebook, Susan Mojitsky, CEO of YouTube, and Marissa Meyer, the CEO of Yahoo. To give girls a look at what has already been accomplished in the tech field and give them motivation to want to accomplish more. According to Forbes list, Sheryl Sandberg is the most powerful woman in tech this year for the fourth year in a row and is ranked eighth for the most overall powerful woman in the world. She graduated from Harvard, was a top executive at Google, and is now a billionaire thanks to her COO position at Facebook. Susan Mojiski also graduated from Harvard and was a, is a senior vice president at Google and was the driving force behind Google's AdSense, which placed Google, blog, placed Google advertisements on different blogs and websites. And she also largely influenced Google to purchase YouTube, which is now a large part of their income. The advertising products she oversaw account, accounted for 96% of Google's revenue in 2010 at $28.2 billion. Marissa Meyer graduated from Stanford and also started at Google and was the driving force behind the creation of Google Maps, Street View, Earth, and Gmail. When she was appointed the CEO of Yahoo at the age of 37, she was one of only 20 women running a Fortune 500 company. These are all extremely successful and inspirational women, respected in technology, breaking stereotypes to pave the way for girls like me who want to pursue a career in technology. Speaking more about these women and women like them will help further the understanding of girls still unsure of a career path that it is possible for a woman to excel in this field and it will inspire them as it inspires me. To combat the gender inequality in the technology sector at my high school, a few of my other classmates and I jump started a club called Girls on Technology or GOT, whose mission is to help encourage girls to pursue a career in information technology. A couple months ago, we took a trip to a local elementary school to help introduce computer programming to the kids there. The kids loved it so much that their principal instituted an after-school program to help further the kids' coding education. It was great to do something like this because I was actually helping aid a solution to a problem I had been wanting to solve in our society with the gender gap in tech. In my career, I want girls to be by my side cheering me on as I accomplish great things in tech and I want to be on the side of other women cheering them on. But a lot needs to be done to help, still to help combat the gender inequality in technology sector, but that should not be a reason to refrain from making progress due to fear that there is so much progress to make. This includes discarding stereotypes. The idea that math, engineering, and technology are boy subjects, and that if you're a girl that likes them, you're geeky looking, are harmful for those who want to pursue a career in this field and are contributing factors to the gender gap in technology. It's necessary to discard old stereotypes such as these and offer more information about these fields and how it would benefit women to pursue them. If more girls felt motivated to pursue what they are good at despite stereotypes, there would be less of a gender gap, especially since girls compromise 56% of all AP test takers, 46% of all AP computer science, or sorry, AP calculus test takers, but only 19% of all computer science test takers. So clearly, there's something unequal being conveyed across the board for males and females. The encouragement for high school girls to take tech classes is lacking, and we have to change that. I have taken several STEM courses throughout my high school career, such as web design, computer programming, and information technology in a global society. And in a class of about 25, I typically am one of two or three girls. My teacher thinks this ratio is so disproportionate because the want for high school girls to take tech classes just isn't there like it is for boys. So we have to create that want. We have to spread the message that the only reason that engineering or math or technology are stereotypically boy subjects is because only boys take them, not because only boys can do them. And in the words of Code.org's founder, Rishma Sujani, we have to teach girls bravery, not perfection. Perhaps if these girls who shine in computer science and calculus, I'm sorry, if perhaps if these girls who shined in calculus believed that computer science was something that they would be able to do and was useful to learn, they would be more, even if they had no experience in it, the result would be eager young women looking to study technology. Too many girls feel the need to excel in everything they do, and we need to help them unlearn that and take a chance on something they have the potential to excel in, such as computer science. 
It's time to embrace the feminist outlook, to dive deeper into all of the possibilities in technology to help make our world the better place. If you think about all the amazing technology that you use every day that has made a positive impact on your life and on the planet, it's pretty insane. We have improved communication, transportation, and medicine tremendously, all through technology. And since all of these amazing creative ideas came from a majorly male outlook, imagine if there was a prominent feminine perspective during the creation and promotion of these technologies and all of the amazing ideas that could come from that and all of the world-changing technology we are missing out on because that perspective is missing. In the future, I hope that this talk will be irrelevant due to the amount of women in technology creating and implementing technical solutions to help make an improvement on our society. And to quote Sheryl Sandberg, in the future, there will be no female leaders. There will be only leaders. Thank you.